history, politics, sociology, the story of Beirut and reclaiming the Biddish with Professor Samir Khadaf for episode 50 of the Beirut Banyan. perspective goes back to my days at IC in high school yes. in the late 40s and then you be in 50s wow. we used to demonstrate mm-hmm. uh, um, against Israel against the occupation of Palestine against the French uh, um, and and I, I recall at that time how 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 impactful mm-hmm. these events were. Yes. But they were nothing compared both in scale and magnitude mm-hmm. and expression to what we had witnessed here. My God, we are told a million, a million and a half, I don't know. Could be or, even more. We don't, yeah. Be, yeah, yeah. On, on, on Lebanon. Yeah. And it seemed to me genuine because it was unrehearsed. Right. You, you didn't see people articulating slogans, the yeah. slogans evolved in a day or two about mm-hmm. uh, and all of this. Yes. But um, it, it was to me a, 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 an, an, an irrepressible, you know, um, 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 episode mm-hmm. that I will never forget about. And it is going to also to those people who participated in it, to those people who watched it on, on the media, they are already, already they are talking about that, that this is a milestone yes. in our life. And when you go back to the student protests of the 1950s, do, do Lebanese think of, think of themselves differently now than they did when you were a student? I think so. Mm. And this time, Lebanese were decrying what has happened to their country yes. by, 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 by their own politicians, by their own political leaders. Right. So there is... This uh, inward anger mm-hmm. that is at, at, at that time we were attacking either a colonialist country or right. Israel or um, what happened to, 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 to Palestine or mm-hmm. so on. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time, what was different to me, there were leaders. Yes. I could tell, yes. you know, who are the people who are leading the demonstration. Yeah. I could not tell here, although they were involved um, 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 millions, mm-hmm. who is um, the, the, the spearhead of, 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 of this event. So a genuinely leaderless uprising, yes, yes. at least the past four weeks now, yes, yes. as opposed to what I'm familiar with, which is names emerging, or even perhaps yeah. politicians sort of taking over and, and leading it. Do you think that that makes it uh, sustainable, that we have a what a youth bulge in the middle mm-hmm. of Beirut, and we see them? I mean, their 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 leadership is Instagram and WhatsApp and Facebook. Yeah. They're really on their own. Do you see that as a way as a way to achieve political gains that will happen later, or is this something that is so new? I I didn't think so until last night. Uh huh. The, the intensity through which the young mm. men and women were talking mm-hmm. about uh, um, and, and, and the way they were uh, um, uh, gesticulating yes. what they want to do mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. the um, makes me entertain the thought that perhaps they will not give up yeah. unless there is a change. So there is and real passion now. Yes, real, yeah. there, there is a passion for And today, so, I, I feel it, it, it is not just wishful thinking. Yeah. I, I feel there is passion and determination mm-hmm. to see this uh, through. I want maybe your yeah. a perspective on the way the average protester looks at sectarianism today mm-hmm. as opposed to the 1960s and 1970s. I don't know, and I'm, I'm not able to yeah. gauge whether or not the chance for secularism are actually 
genuinely chance for a secular state mm -hmm. or if it's a just a, a disbelief at how poorly governed we are and the sectarian model maybe is being blamed for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. and I'm not able to get to the bottom of it on my own yeah. what that you say you, you can say we want to overthrow the regime and we want a secular regime yeah. in its place at the same time I, I know that Lebanon has never been governed that way. Yeah, yeah. And it would be so alien now to assume that that's going to happen. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, just like we say the, 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 the Haraq or the uprising is, is, is exceptional, is very unusual. Yes. But in my book on civil and uncivil unrest, mm -hmm. I argued that the civil war in Lebanon was very, very, very unusual. Right. My basic thesis yes. there, and it was quoted several times, that people ended up killing not those they wanted to kill, mm. but those they could kill. Okay. There yeah. is proxy violence. Yes, right. When, when the Syrians, and I begin there, started hitting the Maronites in the mm. north, mm -hmm. the Maronites were not their enemies. Right. Their enemies were either Israel or Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. But Saddam Hussein and Israel are not accessible and right. they are not vulnerable. Right. And I use these two concepts. Uh -huh. But to the Maronites, to the Syrians, are accessible yes. and vulnerable. They can be killed. Nobody is going to come and... So, but this time, mm. this is what sustained the war. Right, yeah. You know, um, yeah. by the end of the war, and I calculated, more Christians were killed by other Christians, mm -hmm. more Palestinians were killed by other Palestinians, mm -hmm. Yes. More Shiites were killed, the Sunai, yes, yes. killed by other Shiites. Yeah. This, is, this is what is very, very pathological about the nation of civil unrest at that time. Yes. And there were no mass protests. Right, right. How about that? During the Civil War, there wasn't no, any. I mean, there were flickers of it in the late 80s, but yes. that was more against Ta'if. Yes, and that yeah. was not, yeah. not the same that we're no, seeing. No. Yeah. So there's... It's not necessarily that they're challenging sectarianism, that they're just finding things to attack at the moment, as opposed to what is really a sectarian way of governing. Mm -hmm. Did I mm -hmm. get that right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But, yeah. But also, it's, it, it becomes an issue of, of identity. Yes. The last book of Amin Ma'roof mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, yes. speaks, speaks about that. Yeah. And I, I could see it emerging. I mean, this is the first time everybody was wearing and carrying the Lebanese flag. Right. All over, you know. Right. And, um, um, and the national anthem. So uh, this is very transformative. Mm -hmm. And I think this thing is one of the elements that is not going to be blown away. In uh, your, in your yeah, gut yeah. instinct, does this feel like a revolution or does it feel like demand for reform? And I, I know that there, yeah. I know that these words overlap, but yeah, yeah. yeah. They were, it, it's more than just reform. It's more okay. You 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 could reform my fiat. <laughs> um, you, you, but it, it 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 doesn't. Um, Which one's I mean, easier to fix? Yes, yeah, it, 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 it is, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. It is not going to make people uh, love the other, you know, um, and admire. Right. So right. my my issue. Uh, in in, 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 in in my analysis of space, especially the Corniche and the other places, how how do you share space mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. you hated, yeah. with, 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 with people you wanted to kill? Yes. And this is really how the disappearance of public spheres in Lebanon right. has been very crucial to me. Yes. Now, perhaps this is the beginning. Mm -hmm. Of, um, yeah. My favorite book of yours is The Heart of Beirut, yeah. which is a, in a way, it's a tribute to Martyrs Square. Yeah. And uh, I believe the subtext, subtitle is Reclaiming the British, yeah. which is, I mean, reflects back on a time where, sure, yeah. I mean, Ottoman Beirut mm -hmm. and the heart of Beirut, yeah, yeah. not just physically, but commercially. And this, it was the center of the city. And today, I mean, four weeks ago, and I think yeah. it's common to everyone here. Sure. We don't associate Martyrs Square with anything but a scarred part of the sure, city. Sure, 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 absolutely. Parking lots. Right, right. And now and it's unbelievable that it's just it just came back to life. 
And is the, when you say reclaiming public space, are you referring to using Martyr Square for its original purpose? Exactly. So in other words, the fact that we have tents there, mm -hmm. we have people discussing politics, using the space mm -hmm. for change. And also we've seen the cinema, mm -hmm. the old egg, yeah. being used for lectures, and I believe AUB good, good, good. faculty have been doing good, it too. Good, yeah, yeah. Is that what you mean by sort yes, of taking yes. over the city? And, yeah. and uh, the notion emerged earlier. It emerged in my little book on um, uh, uh, Beirut, uh, uh, restored Beirut, reconstructed. But, but, but yes, yeah, yeah, reclaimed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And where, where Edward Said wrote a long introduction, he liked it very much. Mm -hmm. That was inspired by my son Ramzi. Uh -huh. We had come back after an absence of six or seven years in Princeton, mm -hmm. and we lived on Kimonso in my brother's house. Mm -hmm. And um, um, Ramzi woke up um, with the muazzin. Right. He has never heard the muazzin in, yeah. in, in, in Princeton. <laughs> and a, a, a rooster. Yeah. And I said, hey, Daddy, what is this? Come, Ramzi, this is a rooster. And then there was the jasmine and the bougainvillea. Yes. You know? yes. So he thought all of Beirut is going to be that enchanting. Right. So, right. yalla, 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 let's go. He, I could hardly wait. He put mm -hmm. his clothes and we walked towards Hamra. Okay, yeah. And the first thing he saw was what he called Swiss cheese. Oh, yes. The, the buildings right. that, that are, you know, pocketed. Shrapnel damage Shrap and all that. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, and then, uh, rather, Ramji, we runs this time, he, he, he came back, he held my hand, mm -hmm. and this poor boy was sweating. Uh huh. So I said, Look, these are the two elements in Lebanon today. Yeah. There is geography and there's fear. And that's going back to the 90s. Yes. So this is after the yeah, Civil yeah, War yeah. ended, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How can we use geography, landscape, architecture, mm. urban planning mm -hmm. to preempt fear? Very and interesting, yeah. Very interesting, and yeah. because at that time, the Lebanese couldn't see the mountain. Right. They, 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 they couldn't see, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't see Suor. Yes. I, although I, 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 I loved to, to, to swim in Suho when I was mm. in high school. Um, so this is why these continue to be mm -hmm. the delicate features. Ramzi, on, when we were flying back, he says, Daddy, how does this beautiful country produce such a shitty political culture? <laughs> well... Yeah. I mean, if anyone could answer that question, yeah. right? Because it is really torn between beauty and ruin. Yeah. It yeah. is really You're right. both. You're right. You're right. And it's, it's a tragedy that that's the post-Civil War order. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. not a, what you would assume to be reconstruction and, and rebuilding. The tragedy continued. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've walked by the Grand Theater and thousands of times. Every right? day. And I never... I never thought I could go in until the yeah. protests, which the, the, these uh, protective barriers were yeah. knocked down. You have thousands of protesters taking back the Grand Theater, and it's such a beautiful structure. And I was on the committee to transform this yeah. into a, 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 an outlet, mm -hmm. a, a restaurant, uh -huh. but also a place, a stage, yes. where people... It exists in New York and yeah. Boston, yeah. where people would come watch a play, but at the same time eat. But you know, that kind of decision-making, it is unfortunate that Lebanon's problems tend to be regional, and there's not, there are regional issues that have kept Lebanon from functioning like a normal state. But that is not a regional issue, that is simply domestic corruption. Absolutely. And can I ask you, from your, from your opinion, cause since you've seen... You've seen Lebanon before the war, you've seen a Lebanon during the war, and you've seen this country re-emerge and kind of sluggishly put itself back together. Can you point the finger at who is really to blame for something like that? Is it simply a that we did not demand more as a population, or is it something structural? It, in general, it's, it's structure, it's the, it's the political culture. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But that's that doesn't tell us much. No, it tells us yeah. that, you, you know. But 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 if you live in this society, you begin to expect that that um, uh, uh, proposals, plans, uh, 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 ecstatic sort of um, um, uh, project mm -hmm. uh, never realized. I was on the international committee for the creation of downtown Beirut. Mm -hmm. We hired a beautiful, beautiful uh, British, you know, uh, town planner and architect. And uh, why? <laughs> Bri says, Hariri has taken so much land for Sunnis. The Shiites don't have anything. Mm. But the Shiites didn't live in the center. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to build was not parochial. Yeah. Uh, a theater is not parochial. It's actually a, a very yeah. neutral And in place. my design, I introduced yeah. the, um, um, like in Rome, the, the um, Roman uh, stairs. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. It will be at the end of the Burj. Yeah. And I had imagined um, people playing their guitars, singing. Yes. People could be having, um, um, you know, discussions, uh, somebody reading his poetry or so on. Yeah. It's a pity. So that's uh, basically yeah. two things. It's the power sharing mechanism mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's corruption. And they're sort of linked mm -hmm. together here that we yeah. cannot expect more because this is the way Lebanon is governed mm -hmm. and the post-Civil War order was so corrupt and so malign that le the average person yeah. did not expect more. Mm -hmm. They expected even less, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest tragedy for someone like me, yeah. who's yeah. Ne never known a Lebanon before the war yeah. and had high hopes, and they yeah. were not materialized. And I, I only lean back now on stories from the older generations, mm -hmm. and it's almost like a fantasy story yeah. now. Yeah. And at the same time, we broke into the Grand Theater, and we got to see it. And it's almost yeah. like a, a missing link to the story. It's it's, it's there. A, it, yeah, it's a it's a pity. It yeah. doesn't require much to rebuild it. Things people spend more money on weddings here yeah. than they do on yes, restoration. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. I, I know about that. In my chapter on consumerism, I had to bring out data uh, figures on on um, uh, Mirna Bustani. The, mm -hmm. uh, the hotel mm -hmm. yes. in Al Bustan, yes, in yes. Romana, mm -hmm. Miri. Yeah. Uh, every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, three days of the week, all the way from April until November. Yeah. They're booked. Yeah. Hundreds Book. of thousands of dollars uh, spent. Absolutely. On, yeah. 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 While that money could have just restored one yeah. building in yeah. downtown. <laughs> Maybe that shows where the where the effort was at the end of the war. It was short term pleasure, as opposed to long term mm -hmm. sustainability. Mm -hmm. I think back to my youth and my student years of AUB as a, a central component to who I, who I am and how I identify with Beirut and Ras Beirut and AUB in particular, but the neighborhood is that little microcosm of whatever you want to call it, uh, not a melting pot, but maybe a, a place where no one cares what the other person is. Yes, yeah. The last names don't particularly matter. And if they matter, they matter up to a point only. And communal differences are put in the background and other things are put in the foreground. I, I get away with that. <laughs> My name is Samir Khalaf. Yes, right. Here and in America and in Europe, when I'm giving a lecture, mm. they all come afterwards but what are you yeah you know that I'm, I'm not Muhammad I'm not Ali I'm not sure. Hussein you yeah. know so I tell them Look, I'm a sociologist <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> just like Ramji says he's a baritone he's a baritone yeah, yeah right so but that's the power of Ras Beirut absolutely if if more of us yeah can begin to identify ourselves mm -hmm. by activities that we that 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 engage us that, that arouses us, that, yeah. that makes us feel different. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. when I was your age, I, I was a long distance runner. Right. I, my aim was to have the record uh -huh. of the mile, yes. To, to, yes. to run the mile in less than five minutes, which wow. I did. You, you did know? it? Huh? Yeah. Wow. Um, 
but we an AUB gives you yeah such outlet absolutely uh, but which are, but what we're seeing now in the middle of Beirut is that to you a reflection of what we have in Ras Beirut where people come together and their their communities don't matter or is it just a an attempt at sort of reuniting different communities yeah. and different maybe different classes different different everything because not you yeah. I walk around Mart Martyrs Square today and I, I feel I feel it a bit that this reminds me of that equal among equals that no one stands out that we're all the same do yeah. you feel that there's I, a parallel I, there I, I feel I feel that way mm -hmm. although here obviously what stands out is the scale yes yeah right which which uh, uh, but it, uh, it is um, uh, people who in my piece on the Corniche, mm -hmm. I speak about how the Corniche is the only urban open space yeah. that different people from different backgrounds mm -hmm. use it at different time of the day. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Early, early morning, <laughs> you find uh, people like you, people like me at yeah. five o'clock, yeah. you know, want do, uh, do the ambitious, the ambitious uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, um, at around 10, the idle middle-aged men who are not working until right. noon. Right. At around the, the most interesting to me is when the families come mm -hmm. on weekends. Mm -hmm. The whole yeah. families. Yes, right. They, the father and the mother, and the, yeah. they, they eat, they, they, they play. Yeah. In the evening, um, the, the, the amorous types go down. Yes. Early, early, early morning. Um, is, so... You have a variety of activities, right. a variety of groups using space mm -hmm. um, openly. And this is the only place that exists in all Beirut. When you were younger, were there other places like that? And no. I don't mean AUB particularly. No. There was nothing like that no. anyway. So there's almost a false nostalgia about the Huddish. People talk yes. about it as... Yeah. A park where Lebanese used to go. It never was no, that no, for no, you? No, okay. No. So it's just the Corniche yeah. that's always just, served that yes, purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now accidentally a open wound in the middle of Beirut, which is Martyrs Square, mm -hmm. can pull in a million people at once. Yeah. And yeah. the whole city can converge. This is to me a, a byproduct mm -hmm. a, a, um, of the spectacle. Right, we were, we, we right, were, we were, right. We were observing, yeah. and and at, at hope, I hope it, it it gives people the opportunity to to reflect on it, to think about it, to become um, part of their growth. It, yeah. it, it, people cannot scream and shout for four, five, six days and not have, a, 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 I mean, a cognitive and emotional <laughs> in, in, in impact on them. Right. Yeah. I sense it even at night now, where people are shouting and joyous yeah. sh chants, and people are sort of hitting their their pots at home, and yeah. there's a, there's a, there's life now that I've never felt. I didn't feel it in March 14 or the Youth yeah. Think movement. Yeah. This is new. Yeah, this is new. It's funny. I I go every. I have a ritual every evening, mm -hmm. from from six to eight. Mm -hmm. There is the back burner. The back burner. A coffee place you have to visit. They they make the, the nicest cappuccinos uh -huh. anywhere. Yes, know. I go there because they have the New York Times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the international edition. Yes. They have the New Yorker, so I, I, I read them, and on the way home, mm. I see a couple sitting in the same place, <laughs> on a staircase, yeah. a young man and a young woman. Yeah. So the first time I intruded, uh -huh. I said, look. Um, you look cute. You, <laughs> you, you remind me of what we yeah. did when, when I was your age. Uh, so we, we talked a bit. Mm. The next day, there they were. Oh, yeah. But this time, they stopped me. Oh. Ammo, ammo, I told uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. um, so we, we talked a bit. Yeah. But yesterday, I was inquisitive. I mm. told them, look, why are you sitting here? Yeah. And their story was very revealing. We have been engaged for three years. Oh. We can't afford to get married because we can't afford to rent a house. We are here to change the laws to allow people to rent a house. This is very interesting yeah. because it came up 
in my study on divorce, which I did in 82 before I went to Princeton. And if you go to, to the religious courts, they put the name who, who are engaged or married and the cause of divorce. They had to be doing dakhli. I yeah. thought they meant income. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the, uh, the sheikh came and the doctor, no, 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 no. This means three things. Bedoun Dakhli means he doesn't have income mm -hmm. to buy a house. Mm -hmm. Second, he cannot yidkhul al He right. cannot enter a house. Right. But yeah. third, he cannot enter the womb. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he said that? Really? He, he put that <laughs> That's so, so, so. I think that's that's in, is it in that order? For, the, for, for these characters, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to meet them tonight. That's they, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what they'll tell you tonight. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but that, so that, I mean, and I. But I meet many, yeah. many, many unusual young youngsters. Yes, yes. Who come and, you know, yeah. some have taken my name, have come, look, look, look me at Google, mm -hmm. came back, hey, look, you're not what you. Uh, they learn more it. by yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but we don't, yeah this this and I want your opinion on this because I I mean I loved walking in Saifi village and I loved walking here because for me it's an opportunity to feel what Beirut could have looked like you are very right yeah and I know that most very of right. the buildings are not the original ones but no. some of them are. This is the original one. This is an original one, yeah. So we're yeah. sitting in your home, which is so, it's so charming. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the reason is it's yearning for more homes like this yeah. in Beirut. It's a typical Lebanese home. Yeah. And I know Saifi Village is not a, it's not, I mean, it is a, let's say an upper class or middle upper class, class neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Originally, it was lower. Exactly. Yeah. Originally, it was the lower Taylor class, district. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll and, show, yeah. And actually, Saifi down the street was a red light district. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, different time. Yeah. But it's still a... It's not so much the the rent or the property yeah. rate. It's more the architecture. And having mm -hmm. no cars, having a fountain, having a sidewalk, yes, having yeah, benches. Yeah. Standard stuff just down the street is the wound martyr square yeah you go one block west and it's scarred you go perhaps two blocks south or southwest you reach Khandal Ghami. and you go down was the old red light district absolutely you've brought i mean yeah it's in a way it's a it's an odd yeah. node for every different angle of beirut in its past and in its present yeah. And I wonder, in your opinion, what prevented Beirut, regardless of the the few examples that we know, yeah. which is downtown and Saudi there, but I'm talking about the wider city. What prevented Beirut from retaining its architectural heritage and its history? And I, because I, I ask you because I know that before we started recording, you were mentioning that this home reminded you of your childhood home yeah. on Jeanne d'Arc. Yeah. Jeanne d'Arc, there's nothing like this anymore. Yeah, no, no. It's just ugly, ugly oh, towers. Yeah. And I've seen the old homes disappear, yeah. but I know they mm -hmm. were plenty before. Yeah. Jamezi has changed. Uh, Mono has changed. Ashrafi yeah. is yeah. ugly uh, now. Yes, uh, has changed. has deteriorated. And you, you have the long view. What do you think are the real reasons that Beirut does not retain its charm, that it's gone downhill? I can be very materialistic. Mm. It's the price of real estate, the price of land, mm. 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 which prevents you mm. from preserving. Mm -hmm. I mean, a square meter is $8,000. Yeah. So uh, right away, yeah. you lose the notion of planning, mm -hmm. of, of preserving, of uh, protecting. Um, and this, to me, is one of the most, most um, um, dramatic um, um, uh, demise yes. of what could have been a cosmopolitan city, yes. but with um, enclaves yes. of um, um, 
homogeneous, heterogeneous, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Neighborhoods that link properly, that feed yeah, into each yeah. other. So, so it's really just a price this gouge. In Brooklyn. Huh, yeah, right. Yeah. So you see Beirut's story more like extreme gentrification Absolutely. In, a, in a neighborhood I like in, me. I, uh -huh. I was going to use that term. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is why Saifi Village was an attempt, and I was hoping if we had finished building the, um, uh, the Burj area, uh, it would have been another example of how different groups with different inclinations can perhaps share mm -hmm. public space. But what, what are the real... Is it just simply that prices went too high too fast? So short-term profit? Absolutely. If you, if you, if you do the, the, the plan mm. of... I did it in my one chapter. The construction permits the Belediye gives yes. tells you how many houses are being built. Yeah, right. Uh, and, and, and they were immense. I've heard uh, statistics, 30,000 empty apartments, and that's a conservative estimate. You're right. Which is insane. You're right. You're right. You know? my, the, the wife of George, um, they stayed with us for, for two weeks, just a, a month away, mm -hmm. goes at night with her camera and takes pictures of all the high-rises. Uh-huh. Yes. And she tells me, look, <laughs> Samir, one two, light, yeah. one light, two lights, maximum yeah. three lights. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's yeah. a very obvious but, way of sort of seeing that. And if you see them during the day, they're they're, they're very, very, very uh, uh, refinedly built. Yes, and, uh, I mean, it's a lot of money pumped into these buildings that are dead, and they are bought on the map. Right. Al yes. Right. When 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 yes. it says I own this. Yes. So and they estimate that by the time it finishes, this will be the value. Right. And then they resell it. And so this is like speculative investment mm. gone wild for a city that should have retained its charm. I mean, we've seen cities tear each other apart. We've seen Mediterranean. I mean, go to Sarajevo. Sarajevo more or less looks the way it did before their war mm. broke mm. out. Um, you have cause you have Ottoman cities that have fought each other. Inhabitants tore the city apart, and they sustained themselves. Beirut is really it, it went crazy, and I don't think this can be fixed. This is permanent damage. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine Beirut now, after even after this upswell of emotion, able to preserve its heritage. Right. I right. see that as a lost cause. I I tell I tell people I, I tell my own boys when I go to Midtown, mm -hmm. my favorite place is between uh, uh, 50th and 64, 65 on Third Avenue. Okay. I go there and, and I sit on uh -huh. the side of the street. Yeah. Some of the nicest architecture in the world. Yes. And at night, before they're dark, you see the silhouettes and, and yes. planning and, right. and and I say. <laughs> yes, but but the, the the experience is aesthetic. Absolutely, absolutely. That's all. Yeah. I can't imagine myself yeah. congregating with people and talking with them or asking them for tea or so on. Sure. Yeah. But here you do. Let me show you a picture which I found just recently, and you see exactly what we have been talking about. Beirut reborn. Yeah, this is by Angus Gavin. Uh huh. Look. Oh, wow. This is exactly our house. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look, look, yeah, that's... Um, mm -hmm. Wow. That's the Saheed Al, and that's the Nujarin, and this is exactly our balcony. Our that's tier. your home. Yeah, that's, that's our home. And they are celebrating um, um, Palm Sunday. But I mean, just the number of people and the way it's but lived, yes, and yeah. this is like a—it's an—it's a—it's part of the city yeah. center. It's downtown. Wow. And this is the pharmacy we still use. Oh. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. 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 That's amazing. So this is from the '60s, I'm guessing, or the '50s. Yeah, I maybe? think so. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it says so Nigeri, the carpenter yes. street. Yeah. Right. It's showing how. All types how, of Lebanese would interact. And um, how it could have... How it could have, could have been, yeah. yeah, exactly. 
I don't want to wax nostalgia too much, mm -hmm. but I will take advantage because you, you, you do when I when I speak to you, I do feel nostalgic <laughs> for a, yeah. a for a time that I don't know, and I'm envious that you lived in the prime years of this country's history. Could you just take me back a bit to the moments that you felt things were going wrong? I used to speak to my father about his student years at AUB, and it's almost like he, he always had this way of saying that he knew the country was going to collapse. This is from the late 60s. It's not from 1975 that there was an inclination almost that it's there's no way out, we're going to end up fighting. Mm -hmm. is, was he... I mean, that's one man's view, but did you have that perspective too, that the country I, I, was collapsing? I, yeah, I, I did. Mm -hmm. And I could see it because um, I would um, stop being invited to talk. Because in oh. all my, in many of my uh, remarks and observations, I was pointing out to manifestations mm -hmm. which are a source of dismay. Mm, mm. a source of disappointment mm -hmm. disillusionment and mo it's mostly um, not the way we are building the campus that uh -huh. we, we were very careful about but the way we were recruiting mm. and rewarding faculty and students so this is back in the 60s? Back, back, back in the mid 60s mid 60s so you sensed it just in terms of the kind of the kind of classes or the the way of approaching the subject was shifting? Or, or, or the way um, we, we hire people, uh -huh. and you could tell, uh, second or third year, that the man or the woman is not with it. Right. All of a sudden, we introduce hmm. other hmm. variables. Oh, haram, but you know, he lives with his family here. Mm. Haram, he's uh, trying to get married or build a house in the mountain. So mm. we always mm. introduce non-academic, non-meritorious sources. Mm. And then I, I would tell uh, Roseanne, uh, if AUB is beginning to be that way, yeah. what is going to protect Lebanon? That's fascinating. So AUB was the, in a way, a bulwark against. Yes. Okay, and you, so you could almost sense that if AUB shifts, the country will shift yes. with it. Yes. I think of AUB, and maybe my standards are low. Yeah. I think of AUB as the only place in Beirut that was able to withstand fundamental change. But maybe that's my expectations mm -hmm. have gone down. Yeah. That I think of AUB as able to shield itself for the most part, from the shifting tendencies, not yeah. just a Beirut yeah. of, of yeah. Lebanon. Yeah. So that's, so yeah. you sense that... You it could, was yeah. beginning to be less cosmopolitan. Interesting. AUB itself. AUB itself. Now that's 1960s. Late 60s and early 70s, uh -huh. although this is, to me, yeah. the golden gilded age of AUB. Exactly, yeah. Because we're coming close to the war and, yes. and then everything stopped. Yeah. So it's interesting, the golden years yes. happen to also be the yes, beginning yeah. of the decline. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Do you think back to the student protests of the 1960s and 70s? And there's a professor at AUB, Makram Rabah, I think he wrote a book about it called Campus at War. Um, and it's, it's basically how student protests fed, from, they went from AUB, outside of AUB, back into AUB writing about Kamal Salibi those days yeah, and students yeah. taking sides and do you ever sense that now Lebanese will end up fighting each other the way they did before? That the demonstrations down the yeah. street, do you think that they could potentially devolve into chaos and anarchy the way Lebanon plunged? Yeah. I, I might be naive, but, but um, this needs an incentive. Mm -hmm. Where is this incentive going to come from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the fighting might be very ruinous. Yes. We, uh, saw, we saw muscle, we yes. saw thuggery yeah. two weeks ago where you had an, a protest against the protesters yeah. 
and Martyr Square looked like a war zone for a few hours. Yeah. So there was a sense of it, but it didn't didn't continue. It, it disappeared very quickly. So you don't think that it could, it would not naturally devolve the way Beirut fell apart yeah. 40 years ago or so. Okay, that's maybe a good thing. <laughs> yeah, well, also yeah. perceptions, my, my view of, of, of Marx, play a very important part. In a study, I had uh, one part dealt with how um, administrative employees in the government react uh -huh. yeah. to what they have. If I were in a young age and part of the municipality, I would volunteer to be an urban planner. How <laughs> do you... I will begin to select spaces like the Corniche yeah. or uh, spaces like AUB where you have... Uh, this, uh, but this is something always interesting to me that you could have... There are so many talented people in Lebanon. There's so many educated Lebanese, and you have people trying, and sometimes, sometimes, they are put in a position of power, and even then, they're unable to affect change. And uh, I did an interview with Munna al Halla. She mm -hmm. does the Ras Beirut Initiative, yeah. the Barakat building, she helps yes, yeah. save it. And somebody like her, who is probably the most ambitious urban planner in Lebanon, or has the highest expectations, right? yeah. I don't think... And she said it herself, even if she were the mayor of Beirut, she doesn't think that she could really do much, that you'd have to have a fresh slate, almost like a, a cleansing mm -hmm. of the corruption from all sectors. Do you hold out optimism that now people are demanding accountability and... You're right. It's yeah. funny. There are two women, two young girls. Uh -huh. I come, they always come and talk to me. Uh -huh. And both are named um, Noor. Mm. One Noor Abu Adal, she says, <laughs> and one Noor uh, uh, June. And both are interested in architecture and mm. urban planning. Mm -hmm. Noor June says all her family, mm -hmm. her mother, her father, her uncles, are all urban planners or architects. Yeah. And she loves to, to, uh, to work in, in that area. Yes. So there's, there's, a, a, there's a yearning for it. Mm, yeah. It's almost a yearning for citizenry, a belonging yeah. and a belief that people can... That's new. There's, yes, yes. There's yes, no... Yeah, no. it's fresh. And, and also, you meet people who are um, very difficult to place or define. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I was growing up, when I was your age, mm. people asked me, what are you? I said, well, I'm a university professor. Right. I'm a sociologist. Yeah. But now people don't know how to define right. what they do, actually. Right. And maybe there's a renewed respect for people that want to try. Mm -hmm. They're not considered fools. They're considered admirable. Yeah. And maybe that's the youth. That's something even... I'm, I'm, I think my age group is already a bit too cynical because we've seen failed attempts maybe too many times. And the yeah. youth don't have that perspective. They're really just... Now's their chance. It's funny. As a young boy, our house on John Dark Street, I always recalled the time when professors would be walking, mm -hmm. carrying their, their gowns yes. and their caps, yes. and say, w what is this? Mm -hmm. It's then that I began to associate this event yeah. with commencement or so on, mm -hmm. and oh my God, I could become that way. You right. Know? Right. I, could, I could, when I grew up, um, <laughs> when I think about it, yes. I could yeah. walk and show them. <laughs> <laughs> This happens in, in Ras Beirut. Yes. Yeah. I want to just wrap it up by asking you a, a even more personal question yeah. for me. Uh, before we decided to meet, you said something very, very generous. Uh, you said that the moment my father was killed, you thought that that was the end of an, uh, end of an era. I don't want to take away from the joy on the streets yeah. or the, the beautiful scenes of people coming together and Tripoli to Nabatiye and, yeah. and that's all great but at the bottom of my heart I still think that Lebanon has not resolved its structural problems and those problems are going to deliver the final blow to this country am I being too pessimistic or because I'd like the long I, you have far more insight yeah. far more knowledge do you sense that this is the end of something or is it maybe the beginning of something else, and where do you see Lebanon it's, moving? It's the end of something and the beginning 
of something else. Mm. I can understand, as, as we said before, why why um, um, uh, militants would want to um, eliminate um, Gibran Twainy. Yeah. Um, Gibran Twainy every week wrote a, a scathing editorial yes. against uh, Bashar al-Assad. Yeah. I don't. Um, again, he, 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 by the way, Samir Asir, um, was, his first job was to edit my, my, my book, Kassan Twaini gave him, oh. so I, I, I know wow. Samir. And Samir again, you know, yeah. uh, he, he hasn't, um, there is not a, a militant iota in his blood, yes. you know. Yes, yes. Um, and, and, but your father is the epitome. It's the epitome, really, of a, of a, of a, erudite, honest, decent, um, um, forthright person who has a vision of his country, and the courage to articulate that vision yeah. to people who care. Yeah. To eliminate somebody like this tells you a lot about how wicked. Yeah. the the uh, political setting is for Lebanon. Yeah. How do you? How, I mean, Bashar Assad is still alive. Yeah. So that is ultimately the curse of this country yeah. that even the most even the most well intentioned, decent people get yeah. eliminated yeah. trying. And I don't know if these demonstrations will ever yeah. address uh, that head on. And that's why I always am cautious to be too, too on board with the uprising, whether it's now or if it happens again, that I have this reluctance to completely believe that things will change in this country. The elimination of your father, I didn't say that before, played a very important part in deciding, look, Sunia, how can you retire here? Hmm. How can you retire here? Um, um, I wish I could have become like Muhammad Shatta. I, I, did, I didn't have the qualifications. Um, this is uh, the, the kind of um, 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 metaphor, even, mm. that, that, the, that the country needs. You eliminate him in cold blood. This is why I do this podcast. Is the names you just mentioned. Gibran Twaini, I had his daughter, Nayla, yeah. express her love. Uh, Samir Asir, mm. I had Ziad Mejid share his fondness and his kinship. Um, I've had many people from Yasma Frehan talking about her husband, Basil, and now, in my opinion, um, one of the most important voices still in Beirut, uh, sharing a tragic tale of a country that you've seen change fundamentally, yeah. of a city that I sometimes don't recognize anymore, yeah. but when it comes to at least still caring, I think, uh, I think you're, you're at the top. Thank and you. I, I'm Thank honored you. to have done this with you. A celebration of sorts. The 50th episode with a professor I admire. If you're enjoying this podcast please consider a contribution through Patreon. There's a link in the details box below. And if you want to stay updated, simply subscribe to your preferred podcast platform or find us on our YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm Rani Shatah, and this is the Beirut Banyan. Mm-hmm.